Welcome to Lamins.com. In this video, we will pick up where we left off from our previous VSG video. Just to recap, we have already configured device profile and have our VSG assigned to a compute firewall. Now we will configure a security profile and policies and assign them to a port profile to enforce those policies to the end host. While we are still trying to wrap our head around this, let's start off with something simple. So in this lab, we were just going to permit our traffic between our test servers so we can focus getting connection between VEM and VSG established and verify VPath. For our lab setup, we're still dealing with the compute firewall that is at the application level. We're going to be configuring ACL policies inside an ACL set and then assign it to a security profile that we can attach to the compute firewall. As far as our test server, we have four test server, Web1, Web2, NMS, and db1 on all of them are on the same vlan 601 which is totally isolated with the subnet of 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Port profile has already been created and assigned to each of these vms and later on we can assign the vsg to that port profile to start passing the traffic to the vsg for policy evaluation. As I mentioned back in the vsg installation video on the port profile and the vm kernel interface the vm will be using to communicate to the VSG, you want to make sure that you have the compatibility out 3 v service command configured. So just want to show you here on our Nexus 1000V, you want to look up our port profile that we used to assign to that VM kernel. We call it VMK control. And right here we have capability out 3 v service configured. And if you're doing layer 3 between VEM and VSD, you definitely want to make sure that you have a proxy ARP enabled on the gateway of the VEM. So for us, we're using VLAN 113 for the VEM control interface. And if you go to our upstream switch here and do a show IP interface VLAN 113, and let's look up for ARP. And you can see the proxy ARP is enabled. And the reason for this is when VM is trying to talk to VSG, it would not use the default route to try to get out the subnet, but instead it would try to ARP for the VSG data zero interface IP. And this is why you want to make sure the gateway responds to that uh, ARP request. Okay, so VM knows how to get to the VSG data zero interface. I just show you some of the configuration that we already have on the our Nexus 1000V. We mentioned that our test server is on VLAN 601, and we call that tenant1. And we also have a port profile configured for this already for the other test server. So we call it the VM VLAN 601 tenant1. It's just a regular port profile with the access VLAN 601. Let's just show you that. All the VMs is currently on that VLAN, so you can do a show V tracker. And here we have an option to do VM view. And we can just try to look up the 601. So we miss out one command, VNIC. There you go. So you can see there are currently three VMs Web1, Web2, NMS, and DB1 that's sitting on our VLAN 601. So now let's get on to our VNMC web interface. And lock in. The first thing we're going to do is to create our security policies with all the ACL. So to do that, you go under policy management. And since we're just going to do a very generic permit all, we're going to create the policy or the ACL at the tenant level. So anything below, down below can use that. So here with the service policy, not device configuration, but service policy at tenant one, you have the policies and then you have the option for the ACL. You can see these all other policies, they're actually for the ASA 1000V, which is not relevant to what we're doing. First thing you need to configure is ACL policies. So click on ACL policies and then add the ACL policy. We'll give it a name. Let's call something like ACL permit all. Okay, and then underneath that, there is a rule table. This is where you specify all your ACL rules. So the first rule we're going to create, or this is actually the only rule that we are doing in this video, just call it permit all. And for action, by default, it's drop. Instead of drop, we want to permit. And if you don't specify anything, it's an implicit any to any. Okay, so click OK. 
Now that we have the ACL policies configured, we can assign that or create a policy set. And instead of doing, at, doing that at the tenant one, we're just going to kind of move it all the way down to the F1 level. And we go under ACL, there's the policy set. And then you create a policy set. Let's name this one a ACL F1. You can see right here the ACL policy that we created up at the tenant level uh, shows up because it's automatically inherited by the level down below. And we're going to assign that to this particular policy set, ACL permit all. Click OK. And now we have to attach that to a security profile of that compute profile that we have created. So to do that, you go to service profiles tab. Then you find that compute profile that we have created already under app one. And under there, there's compute security profiles. And then we can add that. We'll call it a uh, sec for security profile app one. And to select the ACL set is the ACL app one that we just created. And as soon as you select that, the underlying ACL policy kind of get expanded down below here as well. So you can kind of double check and make sure this is what you really want. And then you click OK. So at this point, the new policy should have been pushed down to the VSG already. So if you do show run policy, and you can see in addition to the default root ACL that we had originally, now we have the ACL permit all that we just configured. So now the our VSG is pretty much ready to go. We just the next thing that we need to do is to make the VSM and VM aware and start using this particular VSG. So to do that, you have to go to the Nexus 1000V and we have to configure V service node. And let's just use the actual name of the VSG. So stay consistent. Question mark, there's type. And you can see the various types that you can do. Here we're dealing with VSG. So it's type VSG. And then we specify the IP address of the data zero. This is how we, the VM is going to know who it needs to establish the connection to to get the VPath up. And now VSG that we're dealing with as the data IP address of 114.16. And we have adjacency, so we, since we're doing layer 3, it specifies a layer 3. And there's also fail mode, so what happens if the VSG fail, whether it's fail open or fail close. If you want to be strict on your security, then you do fail close. And now, with the port profile that we have already assigned to our test VM, okay, we're going to have to associate the VSGs to that port profile. So, let's do show run profile and look for 601 and profile All right first you, the first command you have to do is to specify the organization level where the compute firewall that we want to associate to this particular port profile is located for us is root and then tenant one DC one and app one. You want to make sure you be as specific as you can here. It has to be exact match. Okay, enter. And then we tie this to the vservice that we just configured. Node, and then the node name. So let me scroll up. And this is the name we gave it. Question mark. You have profile. So now you have to specify which security profile you want to associate to this particular VLAN. And the one that we created is called SEC Profile App 1. Okay, so that would be sec profile app one. Enter. Okay, now just to make sure that I would just typed in the what's taken in the config. Let's do show run port profile one more time. See right here with the org level and the service. Okay, so at this point the VSM and the VM should be aware of this particular VSG. So next thing, you want to make sure there's really a connection established or actually the VSG is, is really reachable from the VM so the VPath can be built. So we do that, there's a special ping command that you would like to, that we want to do. So we can ping vService. So basically you do a ping from the VM towards the VSG and there's, if there's a reply that you know your 
connection or connectivity is good. So here you ping the node, and the node would be the VSG, I'll target VSG data IP. Let's say it should be IP, then the actual IP. And then you can source it from the, a specific module, or you can just ping from all the modules that you have, which is what we're going to do at this point. So we'll ping. All right, and one thing you notice right here is the first attempt, you can see the ARP is not resolved, and this is where the actual ARP or proxy ARP is happening. But once the VM has the ARP reply or knows the MAC address, which is due to the proxy ARP is going to be the gateway, you can see the ping actually went through for the last four pings. So we know that we have a good connectivity between the VM and the VSG data interface. Okay, so for some reason, if the ping came back fail, the first command you probably want to do is, this is again, just to give you a little bit of troubleshooting uh, tip. So show v service, and then you can do brief. And the first thing we're going to look at here is the state right here. If it's alive, that means the VSG is reachable to the VEM, and this is particularly module three, which is where all of our VMs are located. If it's not reachable, the state will come back and say unreachable and then you have to start your troubleshooting. And the first thing we probably want to verify is the proxy ARP that I mentioned is enabled on the default gateway of the VEM control interface. Okay, so now that we have pretty much the VPath established, and these are all the VMs that's currently part of the VLAN that's being passed through the VSG, all right? So now we're gonna do some testing. We're gonna hop onto the web one and just do some basic test. So here let me bring up the interface. So here web1, as it's just a Linux machine that we use for our test server. So you can try to ping from the web1 to our other IP. So web1 has the IP of 32. I'm sure it can ping itself. 33 is web2. You should can ping. 34 is database db1 and for the NMS is 16. So you can see all those are pingable. I'm just going to pick one of the hosts. Let's say let's pick uh, 34 and let's, let's leave the ping up. And let's bring up another terminal. This time instead of ping, we can try telnet to let's say 0133, 22. And see so you can, oh, that's SSH. But we just use telnet on the port 22. You can see we get a echo back. So we know that port is open as well and can try the same thing as say 34. Okay, and we can also try the web browsing. Start off with itself, again 1.32. Okay, you can see we have a little splash page where it said, okay, this is web server 1. If you try 33, we know it hit, we hit the web server 2. And if you try 34, we know it's a database server 1. Okay, so all of those are Good. Let's do a tone and leave that uh, kind of running. Let's try 16, 22. Okay, so let's kind of leave that up. Let's do, uh, let's pick one more host to test. Let's do it on DB1. So we're just going to go through the same series of tests with the ping 0132. Okay, 32 is good. 33 is good. 34 is good, and 16 is also good. Now let's just do a quick town net to 22, and that's open as well. So we know that everybody pretty much have every, has connectivity to everybody, All right? Next, I just want to show you some of the show commands where we have the this um, traffic being generated. One is a ping, and one is the town net. So if we go to the VSM, or the Nexus 1000V, if you do show service and question mark, you can see there's a few options that you can do for the show command. The main one is show detail, because that's pretty much incorporated all the other show commands in there. So go from the top is the license information. Since we only have the host that used the port profile with the VSG attached on the module 3 or ESXi1, we are only using the license on that particular host. And the license count corresponds to the number of sockets or CPU that's 
being used by that host. And there we have two uh, CPU sockets. So that's why it says license count is two. For note information, again, this is saying that the module three connectivity to VSG uh, state is alive and it's layer three and this is the IP of the VSG. Okay, and then it's just showing you the detailed information of each of the VMs as part of uh, that VLAN that we have VSG enabled. Okay, if you do show the service, another interesting command that you might want to take a note on is uh, V service connection. And this is, this shows you the active connections that the VM is seeing for that port profile. And as we have the continuous ping going between a web one, which is dot 32 to 34, and this is also a byte counts. If we generate some traffic on the telnet or SSA session that we have, you can also see it shows up here as well, going from 32 to 16. And here's a byte count. Okay, so those are the list of active connection. Now, if you jump to the VSG, if you do show VSG command and question mark, we also have a few options that we can do here. So start from the top. You have the DV port, and this is the distributed virtual switch port or virtual port. And here we have 16, 33, 33, and 34, which is four of our VMs. Okay, we can do show VSG IP binding, and this is what shows the IP of each of the VMs. Okay, and the corresponding security profile that it's being used. Okay, and the you can see the ACL, and this is our ACL set name as well. Okay, show this command, show VSG, let's see what else we can do, um, security profile. Okay, and so far this particular VSG has received two security profile, one is there already by default, and the other one is the one that we created in this video. All right, with the profile name and the, again, the ACL set name. Next is show VSG VM. And again, this is just a list of VM with a little bit more information as far as the OS and the name. And the last show command that we can try, although we're not going to see anything because we haven't really configured any zone yet, we're going to do that in the next video. But you can also see what's, what uh, VM is in which zones. Okay, the next command we, we want to show you is show service path. This is related to the VPath connections. You can see currently the VSG is seeing the, the telnet or SSA session between dot 32 to 16. And it knows it's on the VLAN 601. And if it's actually on a VXLAN, it will tell you so. And the action is permit. Okay, very similar to the ASA to show connection. If you look at there's a flags, and if you compare this different designations to the list above, you find out the current status of the connection. For example, the capital E right here, it said the connection, the TCP connection has, has been established because the handshake has already happened. Okay, now if you go back to the VNMC and we go to the resource and manage resource, and if we go down to find our compute firewall, just down at the app one, right here, if you look at the tab of compute security profile, you can see the port profile that we assigned the security profile to, it shows up right here as well. So that's the port profile is currently utilizing that security profile. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is if you go to resources and under tenant, and right here, all the four of our test VM show up as it belongs to the tenant one. Now that we have verified that VPath between the VM and VSG is working and the VSG sees all the traffic, we can next work on locking down our access list to only allow certain traffic between our test servers. Okay, so that's pretty much wraps up our video on VSG basic security profile and policies. So remember you can sign up on our website to receive updates on the latest lab video and access additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.